another week of Kidopolis at my dining room table with Miss Jessie. This is my dining room table. I'm Miss Jessie and this is Kidopolis for a little while. Who knows how long. Um, we are still in the month of October. It is our last week in October and the theme is Drop the Act and we're focusing on integrity. Choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. And this week in particular, the bottom line is focus on what's true. So I'm going to teach you a fun car game. You might already know it. We play it sometimes when we're driving around town or on long car rides. Um, it's a little tricky, so let's see if you can remember the rules. If you hold up three fingers, it helps. This game is called Two Truths and a Lie. So you tell two truths about yourself and one lie, and then the people around you have to guess which one the lie is pretty easy, but sometimes it can get kind of tricky. Um, one time Phoebe did all lies and it was like just this really confusing mess, but we got it. We got it. She's a pro at the game now. So I will do my two truths and a lie. Here we go. So I grew up in Michigan. I love hot tea with no sugar and I take my coffee with extra cream. So which one of those is a truth and which one's a lie? Tricky. Okay. The lie is I take my coffee with extra cream. I don't like that much cream in my coffee. Just like a little bloop bloop to give it like a little bit of body, I say. But every time I go to the drive through and I say just a tiny splash, it comes out like white. And I'm like, do you know what a tiny splash is? But it's fine. Take my coffee with very little cream. So I did grow up in Michigan. You guys probably know that I've been up there several times this year and drinking tea right now with no sugar in it. Um, I think sugar and tea is just weird. Unless it's like ice cold ice iced tea, right? Okay, do you wanna do one more? What you do? Okay. Um, all right, two truths and a lie. When I was growing up, I had a bird named Polly. My first pet that I had to myself was a cat named Grasshopper. And I currently have a pet hedgehog named Butterbeer. You guys remember Butterbeer? So we probably know that one's a truth. So what about the other two? Did I have a bird named Polly? I did! But my very first pet to myself as a grown up was a cat named Cricket. It was so close. So um, play that with your family and your friends, maybe help pass the time in car trips. Hopefully it'll be fun, and hopefully it'll help you to remember to focus on what's true. Sometimes you can't always spot the lie, but if you can figure out what, what you know about the person that is you're playing with, it'll be a lot easier, and by process of elimination, you can get that lie batted away. Okay, so that was fun. Send me, your two, send me three statements about yourself, and I'll see if I can pick it out. Okay, so. The story this week, it's not really a story, um, but a little snippet from the book of Philippians written by, also starts with a P, but not a PH, Paul, and he wrote it when he was in, starts with a P, but not a PH or a PA, PA, prison. Paul wrote the book of Philippians. It was a letter to the church of Philippi while he was in prison. So, <clears throat> I wrote it down here. Um, it is in my Bible, in your Bible, in any Bible that you can find, but 4.8. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and what is worth respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. So, almost it seems like he's talking about... Um, always finding the good in something or n not necessarily finding the good in it, but looking for what is good, I guess finding the good in something, but looking for what is good in something. And um, even though it might not seem obvious at first, there's probably something in every yucky bad situation that is worthy of respect and praise and something that you can be joyful about. So there is a story that came in our curriculum in our lesson packet. Um, and so I have one that's kind of similar, so I'm gonna tell it to you, okay? All right, so I was once this thing called a doula. 
um, that meant I helped um, mommies give birth to their babies. Um, I helped them be comfortable. I helped them make decisions that, or stick to decisions that they planned, things like that. Um, and it was, it was a huge blessing to be able to be um, in the room when little babies were being born. It was a dream. Um, one time I had a client, a mommy, who really wanted to have a um, birth with no medicine, which I've done it. <laughs> it's not easy to do for some people. Um, and so as a doula, it was my job to comfort her, to help remind her she didn't want her medicine, that, that medicine. Um, I did some like pushes on her backs and stuff like that, massages kind of to help her be more comfortable. But um, truly at the end of the day, oh my goodness, she was very uncomfortable for, uh, I think it was over 24 hours, over an entire day. Um, and things were getting crazy. I knew back home because I'd been in the hospital for a while and this mom, she was not doing great. She was looking real tired. So I pulled her aside. Well, she was in the bed. So I went up to her and I said, Hey, it might be a good idea to have that medicine just so you can rest a little bit. Um, and you know, maybe after you rest and you relax, baby will come. And her doctor agreed and it was a whole thing and sure enough so she rested um baby came baby was beautiful it was amazing okay but um then on my way home which i did not have a vehicle at the time so i had a friend from church pick me up um and i don't forget that back home i had two kiddos of my own and a whole family and during all this craziness, I'm thinking about, okay, who's, how are they going to get to bed? Because I've been gone for like two bedtimes now. How are they going to eat? My husband, he has to work really late. Um, so what had happened was behind the scenes, my husband had coordinated somebody to, Jacob is my husband, to pick me up from the hospital after the birth and drop me off at home. And he coordinated somebody to pick up the girls from daycare and take them to a different friend's house for the evening. And when I got home, I was feeling kind of blue and bummed out about everything. Um, Cause I felt like maybe I wasn't a good enough doula to that mom because she ended up having to have the medicine, right? And I felt like I wasn't a very good mom because I'd been gone for so long and I felt bad for putting that on my husband and all of these people who I coordinated to work for this. And I felt kind of bad and I, so I texted my friend who had the, my kids and I said, Hey, mind you, I haven't slept in like, it was over 30 some hours at this point. I was like, do you need me to come get the girls? Um, are they asleep? How do you want me to do this? And she said, don't worry. I got to Just come get them in the morning. I said, hallelujah, praise Jesus. So I get to sleep. And it was at that point, it hit me how beautiful everything worked out where the good was, what was worthy of praise, the relationships that I had, that just everything seamlessly worked together. I had people who were on my team that I didn't even know, people who were on that mom's team, who she'd never even met before, who were making sure that she had who she needed there, me, for that birth. I had somebody who was coordinating it and somebody who was like lifting the load off of me so mentally, my husband took that load off me that I didn't have to figure out, we're going to put the girls here and here, and they're going to eat dinner here, but go to bed here. And then the people who actually took care of it, that was amazing. And then I also think about how amazing it is that that woman who gave birth, first of all, birth is beautiful. It's such an amazing thing that our God gives us. It's such a great gift. But that woman who, she had this goal and she didn't get exactly to where she needed to be but thank goodness for medicine thank goodness for hospitals and smart doctors and people who are there to help women like that when they're in that time of need so i just that situation i think about all the things that are praiseworthy there were some things that went wrong and there were some crazy things for sure um but there was some straight up beauty in that even though it took me a while probably because I was tired. Maybe if I wasn't as tired, I would have seen it, but it would have been a different story. But it was so beautiful. Um, so I think about that, and that was worthy of praise. That is worthy of respect. I think about that, and you just see characters of God. And when you can see characters of God, you can see good, and it can help you kind of forget the bad things, or at least move past it with a happier heart. So...
Hope that long story made sense. Hope I'm not just blah, blah, blahing over here. But you guys are going to go watch the so-and-so show. I'm going to hang out here until we do memory verses. Oh, and tell you about my cool new t-shirt. Tell you about that in a minute. All right. See you soon. Ah, Brando. I see you've come to take over the show today. Well, not if I have anything to do about it. <laughs> Who show is it now, Brando? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> it is mine, Johnzo. <laughs> You dare show your face around here. I will not let you take over this show today, eh? Oh, God! Oh, ho, ho. You were saying? Welcome to the So-and-So Show. What an incredible show we have for you today, right, Brandon? Yeah, well, incredible is a strong word. Well, yeah, so, yeah and it's, it's the perfect good. word for today's show. I don't think so. Uh, okay, okay, how about strum diddly umptious? Strum diddly umptious, when words don't suffice, and only a strum will do. Yeah, that's definitely not the word. Okay, what word would you use to describe today's show? Fine. Yeah, fine. Come up with a word. Fine. We're waiting. Fine. No, you don't have to get upset with me. I'll still be no. patient with you. Listen. Fine. Fine? Fine. Yes, I think today's show will be fine. Fine? Mm-hmm. <laughs> or... That's it? Satisfactory. Satisfactory? Are you kidding yeah. me? The show is amazing today. Meh. Buddy, what's going on? Nothing. I just, I just don't want to get too excited. That's all. Why not? Because... The, Life can sometimes be hard, and I don't think that we should forget that. Uh, well, yeah, life can be hard, but life can be great, too. Yeah, but if I remind myself that things can always get much, much worse than, than when they actually do get worse, I won't be surprised. Okay, okay, okay. What if something happens that is really exciting to you? Oh, like this. I love that. That is so funny. Yeah. I remember that. Uh... What just happened? I just... I thought about the fact that some flowers have thorns, and if you walk by them, they can scratch you. I don't understand you. Well, John, it's like this. Dog poo on new shoes and old rotten cabbage. Expired goat's milk and overweight baggage. Using a dull spoon to shave off my scruff. This is just some of my least favorite stuff. Flu germs in smoothies and watered down soda. Hearing the spoilers about Baby Yoda. My leg impaled by a billy goat's gruff. This is just some of my least favorite stuff. You put a lot of thought into this. You have no idea. These stings on eyelids and freeze pops in bathrooms. Falling from tall trees, smelling diesel car fumes. Rice Krispies with mayonnaise, not marshmallow fluff. This is just some of my least favorite stuff. When I'm laughing, when my team wins, when I'm feeling rad, I simply remember my least favorite stuff, and then I don't feel so glad. It's Bible story time with Kellen. What's up, fellas? Just trying to cheer this guy up. Why? What's wrong? Well, Kellen, it's like this. No! 
Not sure what's going on, but can you guys help me out with today's story? Sure. What did you have in mind? This. Hello, and welcome to the Host Feud. We are joined today by our contestants, Brandon's team and John's team. Brandon, who have you brought with you today? Uh, it, well, it looks like I have a mannequin uh, with my picture on it. Not sure how helpful that's going to be. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Brandon. Okay, that's weird. Uh, and also, I have a picture of my childhood cat, Catherine the Great. Hey. Ow. Hello, Kellen. Fantastic. John, who's on your team? Well, I have an enlarged picture from my eighth grade yearbook. Hey, Kellen. Hey, me. You look great. No, you look great. Aww. And uh, also on my team is a potato. Top of the morning, everyone. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Let's hop to it. Let's play The Host Feud. The top eight answers are on the board. We ask the question, according to the Apostle Paul in Philippians 4.8, what kinds of things should you think about? Brandon? Dull things. Dull things. Dull things, yes. All right. Let's see dull things. Ooh, I am so sorry, Brandon. John? Uh... Things that are noble. Yeah, 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 you should think of noble oh, good things. answer. All right, let's see noble. Yes. Number two, noble things. John, do you want to play or pass? Uh, what do you want to do? Play, play, let's play. We're, hey, we're going to play. Let's play. Kellen. We're going to play, Kellen. Okay, I, I think we're going to play, Kellen. We're going to play. Kellen. We're going to play. They're going to play. John's yearbook photo, according to Paul, what kind of things should you think about? Um, I'm going to have to say excellent things. Good answer. Good, good answer. answer. Good answer. All right. Let's see excellent things. Yes. Number seven. Well done. Potato, what do you think about? Well, as a potato, people always want to add things to me or cut me into little pieces. Tater tots, french fries, hash browns. But I prefer just being a pure potato. So I'm going to say pure things. Good answer. That's a good answer. Oh, good answer. Good answer. All right. Let's see pure things. Oh. Number four. Nice job, potato. Uh, Back to you, John. Let's go with uh, lovely things. Good answer. Good answer. Show me lovely. <laughs> you hey. got it. John's yearbook photo. According to Paul, what kind of things should you think about? I don't know. How about uh, things or people you respect? Good answer. Good yeah. answer. Good answer. Good answer. Eighth line. grade John wants you to show him some respect. Oh, Number yes. six. John's team, you are on a roll. Potato, according to Paul, what kinds of things should you think about? Oh, I know what I think about a lot. Ketchup. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Um, show me ketchup. Uh, Ooh, that was your first strike. Two more, and Brandon's team has a chance to steal. What are you thinking about, John? What would Paul say? Um, um, I'm thinking about praiseworthy things. Praiseworthy things. Yes. Good answer. Show me good praiseworthy. Answer. Number eight. Worthy of praise. John's yearbook photo? Uh, what was the question again? According to Paul, what kinds of things should you think about? Right, right, right. Oh, well, show me what is right. No, I was just... Oh, you got it. Number three. Gnarly. Huh. One answer left. Potato? Carved beef hash. <laughs> Good answer. No, oh, what? No, that's just wrong. Show me corned beef hash. Uh, Shucking. It comes down to this, John. One answer left. You get it right, and you win. You miss it, and Brandon's team gets a chance to steal. The number one answer is still on the board. According to the Apostle Paul, 
in Philippians 4.8, what kinds of things should you think about? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't we know. need an answer. Um, uh, Ooh, so sorry, John's team. All right, Brandon's team, do you have an answer? A balls of yarn, goldfish, myself. Uh, balls things of that yarn. are scary. Did I say that? Scary Catnip. things. Uh, really scary things. Scary things. So scary. Man, I wish this was a true or false quiz. That's it. True or false. Uh, true. Uh, you think of things that are true. That's it. Brandon's team wins. All right. Yeah, we win. Wow. Thank you to both our contestants. <laughs> this was the host team. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Great job. Great job, Brandon. Oh, good. Good on you. That was fun, Kellen. Yeah, definitely. No doubt. Thanks for helping, guys. So to review, the Apostle Paul wrote this in Philippians 4, 8. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. Oh, I think I get it. I've been choosing to think about things that are negative, things that aren't lovely or pure or true. I, I should be focusing on what Paul wrote about instead. Definitely. It may not feel like it sometimes, but you are in charge of what you think. Maybe you can't control every single thought that enters your brain, but you can definitely decide what you focus on. And if we focus on these things, it can help us live and think a little more like Jesus. Thanks, Kellen. You got it. I'll see you guys later. See you. Yeah, bye, Kellen. What are you doing? I'm trying to, trying to control what I think about. It is not easy. Oh, well, don't think about me dressed like a Ninja Turtle going down a water slide. <laughs> oh, man, now that's all I can think about. <laughs> uh, reveal the question. Oh, what do you tend to focus on? Be honest. Sometimes I focus on what can go wrong, but after today, I'm going to work on that. Oh, great. And I'm gonna focus on excellent and true things like pizza with extra cheese and God's love. Now I'm thinking about pizza. Lunch? Let's do it. Awesome. See y'all later. Hey, I'm gonna, hey. What? You know what? I'll provide some lunch music. Oh, man. Yeah. Strum diddly um shus. I'm gone! <laughs> okay, if I have to, okay. Uh -huh. All right. Oh, good yep. parry, good parry. Ah, no, oh, I see, where your move? Look at that. Aha, uh -huh, you catch. Yeah, no, you're. <laughs> okay, yeah. Ooh. Oh, exhausting. But I won't give up. Hey, what's that? Huh? Oh, oh. the old what's that? I should have seen it coming. Oh. oh. Yeah, now it makes sense. Hi again. Hope you like the so-and-so show. I'm gonna tell you real quick about mine. LCC Cannot Bliss shirt. We did a tie-dye event, a couple weeks ago, sorry it took so long. We got this snazzy screen printing on it. And if you did one, you should be getting one today, Esme and I. Today is Sunday. In real life, today's Saturday. Tomorrow, Sunday, that's when this airs. And that is the day that Esme and I are going on a royal adventure. Maybe just a grand one to drop all these off. So, hope you like it. Okay, so now it's memory verse time. And our memory verse, um, also, if you remember, if you do your memory verse, send a video to me, FaceTime me or something, see me at Target, pull me aside, don't touch me six feet, please. Kind of kidding, not really. Um, I will give you a treat for doing your memory verse. I'll drop it off at your house, so it'll be super safe on your porch, and yeah, you can wipe it off or whatever you need. Okay, so our memory verse is... Anyone who walks without blame, lives without blame, they start over. 
Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anybody who anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. And you guys remember where that's from? It's another Proverbs 10, 9. Got it? Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. The words in this are a little strange. Um, the the way that the, the words are. So the first sentence talks about how somebody lives. And then the second part is how they walk. But then the second sentence is how they walk and how they get caught. So it's just kind of like a reverse kind of mirror image. So that's why I keep getting caught up in it. It's kind of tricky. So if you guys do it, send me your video. This is the, It is just a little bit tricky. Okay. Memory verse, we can put a little check. If you're, I don't know if you're, if you have like a little itinerary at home, that'd be weird because I don't even have that. But, all right, prayer time. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for another week of your word. Thank you for um, another week of October. Thank you um, for the beauty that you put in things and thank you for the reminder in your word that um we can find things that are worthy of praise and worthy of respect and things that reflect you if we try and ultimately lord we'll be closer to you when we look for those and not the opposite things thank you for all the blessings in our lives we have so many blessings, and I know that we don't see them all. Maybe that's frustrating to you, so Lord, I'm here to thank you for them. Um, we love you. We pray this all in your son's name. Amen. Okay, so that's all I have. I hope you have a great week. Next week will be the first day and the first week of November. And then after that, it's December, which is Christmas time. So we're getting closer, but I will let us get past Halloween. I know there's some people who really love Halloween out there. I see you. I hear you. Beer time's almost gone. It's almost time for Christmas. All right. See you later.